Hey everyone, my name is Sam, and welcome to the start of something I'm pretty sure quite a few of you have been looking forward to. Today, for the first time on this channel, we are playing Choices on my phone. This is the first video that I'm ever filming on my phone. It's really quite weird. It's quite a weird experience because obviously I'm still recording my uh, my face cam with my computer. Um, but I've never done a video on my phone before. Um, but I'm sure so many of you will remember the video I did sometime last year. Um, ranking all of the different choices books and I well I say I say love I have loved choices um and it's an amazing app with so many amazing stories and I rank them all and I did say in my plans for 2022 video that I am going to play choices at some point and here we are finally playing it and luckily, uh, my phone that I got for Christmas, this is, uh, my, I got a new phone for Christmas, uh, comes with a built-in screen recorder, so that's handy. Um, now, I have not played Choices for a long time. I've sort of been away from it. Um, I did say in my video last year that they'd start to, gone, they'd start to go downhill recently, and judging by some of the books... Yeah, it hasn't got any better. However, luckily we're not going to be playing any of the really bad uh, newer books. Today we're going to be playing my favourite choices book of all time. This is the beginning of a series on my favourite choices book of all time, The Elementalists. And let me find the glorious book. There it is! Oh my word. I'm so excited for this. Uh, now, uh, spoilers for the video that I did last year, The Elementalist is my number one, uh, book. It's my favourite book out that Choices have ever made, and given that, uh, a lot of you on my channel may not have seen Choices before, I thought it would be a good idea to start our sort of, uh, adventure into the world of Choices on the best book, uh, personally, that I think is the best book of everything. So, without further ado, uh, we're going to restart the book. Uh, I've, probably re I've probably played through this book more than any other book. So, The Elementalists, Book 1. Chapter 1, Open Enrollment. Freshman year is nothing like you hoped it would be, but your entire world is about to change in ways you never imagined. Oh, I'm so excited to get into this. I've wanted to do videos on choices for so long and the fact that I'm finally doing it is very exciting but let's get straight into it the elementalist god I'm excited you're about to embark on a journey that will forever change all that you know about yourself but before we learn who you will become we need to know who you are now Obviously, I'm going to be looking down for the majority of this. Obviously, I'll look up at the camera to talk to you guys, but obviously, I've got my phone in my hand. Um, so, I'll be playing, and again, Elementalist, straight out the bat, it's a good book because it lets you choose your gender. Obviously, I'll be playing as a guy. Uh, character's first name is obviously Sam. And... We get to choose our character's face. We got a few different, a uh, few different options, different skin colors, obviously. Um, and I usually go with this one. Good face. The 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 guy the guy's a lot more muscular than I am. They don't have the option for for uh, skinny. Maybe that's something they could implement in the future. Uh, the hair. And here we see some of the diamond choices already appearing. I discussed diamond choices briefly before. Um, as you can see, I have quite a few. Uh, I've not been playing choices, as I said, but I have been stocking up on diamonds. Just in case a choice comes that I didn't make in the playthroughs that I've done of this book before, and I decide that I want to for this playthrough. Uh, so I don't have a shortage, basically. 
So we have some silvery hair. I'm not, I don't ever, unless it's a very special occasion, um, I never usually spend diamonds on hair or outfits or anything. Uh, no, I'm not blonde. No. Here we go. This is the hair that I usually go for uh, in the Elementalist. Red alert. All fired up. Here we go. Uh, is this you? Yes, this is me. This is the Sam that we're journeying into the Elementalist with. This is perfect. And finally, when it comes to romantic interests, I prefer to date women. Again, a brilliant... I don't think I've seen... There, there's not many choices books that give you that option. In, in the sort of era of choices where this book was from, I don't think any other book actually asks you what genders you prefer dating. So, again, it's my favourite for a reason. It does so much right. Yes. I'm interested in whamming. As the story unfolds, you will learn more about yourself than you would have ever dreamed imaginable. But all truths come with a cost. Good luck, Sam. And here we go, into the world of the Elementalists. Now playing as... someone not quite yourself. The wind whips across your face as you race through the bar through barren trees, trying to put some distance between you and the creature chasing you. That's not an intimidating roar. Maybe I'll add a sound effect. Yeah, there we go. The force of the monster's roar shakes the ground beneath your feet. You trip at the edge of a pool of black water, catching a glimpse of your scratched and muddy face in the process. That is not me. I, I, like, I don't know. I don't know if you've glitched out of it there, choices. But that, that's not me. Uh. Come on, get up! Keep moving! You dig your fingers into the black soil, pushing yourself toward the mirror you've been desperately seeking. Just a little further. When suddenly the beast crashes through the trees just behind you. You roll onto your back as the creature thunders towards your prone body. Out of options, you throw your hands up and a searing energy pulses through your fingertips. Yu Guang Trabem! Fate to black. Well, fate to white. Now playing as Sham. You bolt upright in your bed, clutching your chest. Oh! That, that felt so real. Your phone buzzes aggressively on the nightstand, and you look over to see that it's almost 10. Your alarm has been going off for almost two hours. I mean, I've got a fucked up sleep schedule, but I'm, I'm not that bad. Crap, I'm going to be late for that meeting with my advisor. You scramble out of bed and dash to your closet to throw something on. We have a choice, we have a choice of outfits as well. Uh, no. Hmm, it's alright. Uh, wait, some at the minute. I wouldn't be caught dead wearing that. Ah, here we go. A nice red and white. Love it. That's the sort of thing I would probably wear in real life. Uh, once you're dressed, you bolt out the door, not noticing someone watching you from inside the mirror. It's the creepy reflection. <laughs> it's Arthur! He's got white hair! You run into your advisor's office without a moment to spare and drop into the chair across from her desk. Sorry, I overslept. But you're not late, so that's quite alright, Mr... She rifles through some papers on her desk. Just Sam is fine. Sam, right. Forgive me, I'm used to dealing with more troubled students. She finds the right file and slides behind her desk. As she scans the pages, she frowns. By all accounts, you're a perfect student. It's only a couple of weeks into the quarter, but your grades and attendance are excellent. So I've got to ask, Sam, why are you here? It's hard to describe. I know I should be happy, but I'm just... not. I try so hard, but no matter what I do, it all just feels like... like I'm sitting in a waiting room or something, and no one ever calls my name. And... what is it exactly that you're waiting for? Um... Yeah, yeah, here we go. Uh, hmm. I'm looking... 
I'm looking for, for a magical world or for, for a life of adventure. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I don't think this advisor is really, um, uh, I don't, she's really not being that much of a help. A life exploring new worlds, collecting ancient artifacts, glowing with mysterious powers. That's not too much to ask, is it? Those are certainly some original aspirations, but I can't help you live in a fantasy world, Sam. Oh, then you're a failure. Yeah, I know, I'm only joking. I just wish I knew what, it, what I was looking for. Whatever it is, it's not this. I know you're at a crossroads right now, and one of the directions you could go would mean dropping out of Heartfelt. It crossed my mind. Please don't do it. When this phase in ends, you don't want to discover that you've given up your chance to get a degree, do you? But what if you're wrong? What if it's not a phase? I'll tell you what. Why don't you go home and think about it? Will you do that for me? Sure. I, I guess I can do that. Well, she really wasn't much help. Later, you stand in the bathroom of your suite and look at yourself squarely in the mirror in front of you. I know you belong somewhere. I know there's more to you than this. Suddenly, the lights in the room flicker. Oh dear. What the hell? Something catches your attention out of the corner of your eye. A glint in the bathroom mirror. Huh? Why do I look like this? What the hell? That's not my reflection. That's... That looks like my face, but... You raise your hand to your face, but when your reflection doesn't move, you're fr you, you freeze. Oh god, this is some this is a this is some paranormal activity bullshit. The mirror itself looks a little odd, almost shimmery. Am I am I dreaming again? No, you're not. You reach a shaky hand toward the mirror, and when your fingers touch the surface, they press into the glass. Oh my. That's, 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 that's not normal. I don't, that's not meant to happen. Mirrors aren't meant to do that. Whoa! You try to pull back, but your hand won't come free. Your palm starts to sink into the glass, then your forearm, and before you know it... Wait, 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 wait! Your whole body is shook through. Oh, this isn't... Rushing water yanks you forward, forcing you to squeeze your eyes shut against the current. Just as you feel your lungs starting to strain, a splash comes from your right. A pair of arms wrap around your middle and pull you to the water's surface. You feel yourself being dragged onto dry land and sputter as you wipe the water from your eyes. You try to get your bearings, taking a moment to gape at your surroundings. Where are oh, the music? I've missed this. Well, we're not in fucking Kansas anymore, that's for sure. We're not in Hartfeld anymore. The Elementalist. I'm sorry. I don't know why, but since I started playing The Elementalist, anytime there's a title call, I do that weird voice as you go, The Elementalist. Darth Sidious. Do it. Alright. Welcome to the Elementalists. Chapter 1. Open Enrollment. In front of you is a picturesque collection of cozy looking buildings with steepled roofs, a manicured lawn, and an ostentatious statue out front. Whole new world. Where the heck are you? Yeah, that's what I want to know. I'd probably replace heck with a uh, fuck. But as you gawk, the carved marble figure keeps moving around, and overhead people fly around on a variety of objects, including an ottoman, a broom, and an ornamental rug. This is... This isn't real, right? Where? Hey, hey, you're okay, I got you. You're a new student here, right? I am a student. That's... you got one part right. Great, you missed the Hall of Mirrors by a mile, but you made it. Welcome to Pendergast College of Elemental Magics. 
Since it's the first day of the new semester, we should probably get you to the dining hall for orientation. If you're feeling okay, that is. As you turn to try and get your bearing, you see a tall, haughty guy eyeing you disdainfully from nearby. I suppose I should have listened to my dad when he said the admission standards are in decline here. Fuck your problem. Didn't you read the information package? There are arrival protocols, you know. Who are you, campus police? Why don't you take him up to orientation then and make yourself useful? Absolutely not! I'm Beckett Harrington! I don't have time to show the other freshmen around campus. His lip curls into a sneer as he says this. He gives you one last withering look before he turns and stalks away. Look, you, you don't need to be making enemies of me. I am not meant to be here. I don't know how I got here, but I'm not meant to be here. I fell through a mirror. Give me some fucking slack. I guess it's just you and me then. I'm Griffin. He smiles at you and warmly offers his hand. You shake it, your fingers trembling from shock and the water cooling on your skin. I'm Sam, and also, I'm very confused. It's my second name. Here, Sam, let me help you. You feel a change in the air around him as he brings his clasped fists up to his mouth and blows through them. Suddenly... Hey, I'm completely dry! And that is, you saw there, the, uh, the Elementalist has cool little animations for uh, magic. Oh, this book does so much right. <laughs> There you go, good as new. You might still want to change at some point, though. It tends to get chilly in the evenings. You've unlocked the closet. You can now change outfits by tapping the closet button on the bottom right. Griffin turns the air current on himself, shaking water off of his shoes as he dries them. Sorry if the work was a little shoddy. Air magic isn't the most natural to us Earth at, but Professor England says I'm getting it. Come on, I'll take you up to the school for orientation. He starts to walk toward the front of the school and you stumble after him. Just like, yeah, I, I have no idea what's going on. Okay, wait, so you're saying... Okay, we will be clever here. We're a clever guy. Um, obviously, magic is real if, if we are here, but this is some kind of school to learn magic. Good to see there's no permanent damage from that trip through the lake. He passed a large statue in the centre of campus, and it swivels its head to look at you. Oh, that's just the security system, set to vaporise any attuneless intruders. But there hasn't been one on campus in... well, I don't even know. Oh god, I would really love to not be vaporised. <laughs> you keep an eye on the statue, but soon it looks away. You let out a relieved sigh. When you turn back, you've reached the massive double doors at the front of the school. Welcome to Pendergast. If you follow me this way, I'll show you to the... Griffin starts toward the staircase, but the loud chiming of a bell stops him. He looks at his watch with a start. Oh crap, I totally forgot about this thief me this thief team meeting I'm supposed to go to. Wait, you, you can't leave me! I don't know what's going on! <laughs> of course not, I'll drop you off at the dining hall. We're just gonna have to speed this tour up, is all. You follow him up the stairs which lead to an adjoining hallway. The dining hall is just at the end of this hall and to the left. Uh, to the end of... To the end of the this hall. That's a spelling mistake. I've a uh, grand mistake I've never realised. Uh, this is the school's main building, so there's a ton of offices and stuff in here. Uh, reception, the dean's office, classroom, some of, the, some of the attunement placement exams are held here too. Attunement placement? I think it's kind of silly too. I knew Earth was my thing when I caused a tiny earthquake uh, throwing a tantrum over dessert when I was five. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 Totally. <laughs> yeah. I. I. Yeah. Sure. Same. <laughs> oh Lord, help me. As you pass one of the doors of the off the hall, you hear a small commotion coming from inside. Oh hell! Uh, Griffin, watch this room. That's the Hall of Mirrors, where you were supposed to come through. I just realized that accent, I know who it is inside here, I'm pretty sure, and I'm pretty sure that accent was not applicable um, for who's in here. The first thing you see when you open the door is a beautiful girl with long dark hair, trying desperately to pull her foot out of a floor-length mirror. Oh, thank goodness, I'm assistant civil play. 
you and Griffin rush over each one, each, eh, God. Each take one of her hands and tug until she comes free. She stumbles right into your arms and blows your bangs out of her face with a smile. Oops, Shreya Mystery in your arms and at your service. Good catch, by the way. Uh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> you're gorgeous! Ah, <laughs> oh, good old Shreya. Shreya straightens up and smooths out her hair. Ah, oh, thank you for noticing. Aren't you sweet? You're not too bad yourself. <laughs> Well, thank you, I, I, I try. Well, he tries. This must be my reward for braving those heinous mirrors. I much prefer air travel, if I'm being honest. But at least I made it. I was about five minutes away from starting my freshman year a month late. Why, why a month? That's when the first visitor's day is. When the wards reopen, of course. Guess Pendercast is stuck with me now. Well, welcome. I'm Griffin, this is Sam. He's a freshman too. I was just showing him to the dining hall if you want to come with. No need, I just know where it is. I'm a legacy student. She struts out of the Hall of Mirrors. Well, that's Shreya. A short while later, Griffin stops in front of a pair of ornate doors. Well, that kind of ends the Griffin tour. Sure, it was kind of rushed. I've got to go, but good luck with the rest of orientation. Actually, if you could just... He's already bounding way down the hall. You turn toward the giant double doors and steal yourself before you push them open. This would be my nightmare because I'm so socially awkward that going into a dining hall where there is most likely some sort of announcement going on is my worst nightmare. Tell you a story. One time uh, I was a bit late for school and uh, I saw that like a massive crowd of students was inside the dining hall. Um, and I, stu I snuck in there, like, in the middle of uh, a teacher talking, and it turns out it was for uh, history, and uh, I'm, I, I wasn't a history student. Uh, yeah, that, that, ugh. I still have nightmares about that. <laughs> As you slip into the hall, you're, mo you're momentarily overwhelmed by the high ceiling, stained glass windows, and the countless dining tables. A handful of heads swiveling your direction, though the dean continues to journal on up front. Please don't look at me. Please. <laughs> Hey, over here! A guy with a megawatt smile waves you over to a nearby table, and you hurriedly slide into the shite- uh, uh, into the shite- into the seat next to him. Hey, you're late. I'm Jeffa. You can call me Jeff if you want. I'm Sam. No cool nickname. Just Sam. You can call me Prince if you want. The Samster. Oh, okay, in, in, on second thought, don't, don't call me the Samster. So, Sam, what's your attunement? I, uh, I'm waiting until tomorrow to find out for sure. Uh, don't want to jinx it? <laughs> he opens his mouth to respond, but is cut off by the Dean loudly clearing her throat. In conclusion, I'd like to remind you all- I've got to do a voice. In conclusion, I'd like to remind you all that this is an institution of high learning. Not a playground for children. Put in the work or go home. Oh, great. I'm going to fit right in. Uh, right, you students start to rise to their feet and shuffle toward the doors. The Dean walks briskly off stage. She's just full to the broom with the warm fuzzies, isn't she? Wait, it's over? I missed the whole thing! <laughs> Don't worry, Dean... Gophies? I'm pretty sure that's... I, I sort of bre I read in my head when I when I do these, so I sort of breeze over it and I don't really think about pronunciation. Dean Gophies, I'm pretty sure. Speeches are notoriously dry. Besides, I'm an expert in listening and speaking at the same time. The gist is, the freshmen will line up at 7am in the foyer tomorrow to get assigned one of the staff as their examiner for placement tests. Points up at the stage where a hairy, kind-faced man with horns is seated behind a table with a few other teachers. As he stands up, you see that the bottom half of his torso ends in thick furry haunches and hooves. Holy crap, he's, uh... Super tall. I know, I asked him already, and the answer is a little over seven feet. Jesus. Jeff stands up as well, and you follow him to join the queue of students exiting the hall. God, I, I love the soundtrack of this so much. It's honestly, I think, my favourite soundtrack of any Choices book ever. Classes will start after all the freshmen have been placed, and your schedule will be given to you then as well. So, what do we do now? 
Basically, the rest of the day is free. My roommates and I have a fun evening of bonding and laying out house rules ahead of us. You follow the crowd of freshmen out onto the ground and immediately lose track of Jeff. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, now what? Hey, Sam! You turn toward the forest and see Griffin coming toward you from the direction of the bridge. Thank God. You survived orientation. How was it? As boring as last year's? Well, I wouldn't know. I'm a freshman. Uh, no, it was really interesting, actually. Well, not the actual speech. I missed most of that. But I saw a, a satyr, I think. And I'm pretty sure I made a new friend. Sure, so much considering where I was this morning. In the whirlwind of the day, you had briefly forgotten about your situation, but it all comes flooding back. I can't believe how far away from home I am. I felt out of place at Heartfelt, but now... Are you okay? You realise that you've gone completely rigid, your body tense. You force a laugh and will yourself to relax. Breathe. Breathe, Sam. It's okay. Just, uh, first day jitters, I guess. It's all a bit overwhelming. He gives you a friendly pat on the shoulder and a reassuring smile. Hey, it's gonna be okay. If it makes you feel any better, you're really bright. How, how do you know that? You've known me for, like, an hour. <laughs> um, what do you mean by that? I mean your spirit or aura or whatever you want to call it. Your energy is intense. I felt it as soon as I dove into the lake to get you. Thanks? That might have something to do with something that's gonna be in a video... soon? He laughs again, unfazed. It gets better, you know. My first day here was awful. I didn't really know anyone at first, but I figured that thanks to my thief scholarship, I'd at least have my teammates. And then next thing I knew, I'm running naked across the lawn, chasing the clothes of my captain magic to life while I was in the showers. I think I'm gonna like it here. Mm, oh my. My point is, that day sucked, but there isn't a single moment since then that I regret coming here. Yeah, maybe it's not the worst thing that I that this is where I ended up. One thing I've learned in my time here is that if something happens to you, good or bad, it happened for a reason. I think you're meant to be here. It's destiny. He pauses thoughtfully, a sly grin spreading across his face. I've got an idea. I could really use your help with something if you're up for it. If anything, it might make for a good distraction. Uh, yeah, and what could you possibly need my help for? I am useless in this world. I've got an itchy nose, I apologise. There's this thing I lost last year. I must have missed it while I was packing up my dorm room, but I'm pretty sure I know where it is now. Still, it's going to be hard to spot, and an extra set of eyes would be fantastic. Do you want to help me try and find it? Premium choices can offer unique opportunities for romance and adventure. It can also sometimes unlock special spells, potion ingredients, mysterious clues, and more. Uh, do you need help? Um, yeah, I would, um, but this video is almost 30 minutes and we probably need to progress through the chapter a bit. Uh, not all the chapters are this long, the first one is always the longest. Um, but we're gonna, uh, we're gonna catch, we're gonna sort of get to know our surroundings a bit, Griffin. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go to, need to sort of figure out a place to sleep tonight. <laughs> uh, unless we want to be sleeping in the lake. That sounds like we're gonna drown. Um, yeah, I was just on my way to the dorms, I guess. Uh, you turn around and realize the large crowd of freshmen you had been following is gone. <laughs> and now I have no idea where they are. Don't sweat it, Griffin Langley, tour guide extraordinaire at your service. The freshman dorms are right this way. You follow Griffin over to a building near the bridge, where he leaves you at the door. As you as you enter, you make out a plaque that reads, Fletchley Residence Halls. Let's head on in, then. As soon as you enter the nearly empty dorm lobby, an upperclassman with a clipboard waves you over. Welcome to Pendergast. How can I assist you? Need help finding your room? Uh, The RA cocked your head to the side. You can just tell me your last name and I'll point you in the right direction. Uh, well, we may as well tell the truth. I mean, there's no point, really, uh... we listen, we are potentially not meant to be here. Making up a fake name is not gonna make it better. Let's tell the truth. My character's last name. Now, obviously, I'm not gonna put my last name, because I'm not really, uh, I'm not really, uh, gonna let you guys know my last name. Um, 
the last name that I always, always, always go with um, for choices books. It, why is it? Why is the first option Russia? Why? The name that I always go with is Everfire. Sam Everfire, at your service. You give it your last name and your stomach rolls as your eyes skim the clipboard. Wait a minute. She glances at you then back at the page. Uh oh. Okay, I have to confess. I'm not actually a... a then she flips the page over. Here we go, Sam Everfire, first floor, room 108. Your roomie has been checked in since this morning. You hurry your way down the hall, simultaneously relieved and even more confused than you were before. I must say, this... I love the backgrounds that they have for the elementalists, they're so cool. You find in, all, in uh, a, a lot of choice books, they often reuse backgrounds, and obviously there's nothing wrong with that. Um, as an artist, I know uh, that obviously, you know, you when you gotta re you gotta reuse stuff when you can, but um, you know, uh, obviously the elementalist is quite unique in plot and setting, so a lot of unique backgrounds have to be done for them. If this is a mistake, how is my name on the list? Because it wasn't a mistake. We're meant to be here. Behind the doors down the hall, you can hear music, people laughing, and even an occasional roar. This is concerning. Finally, you find number 108. You see that there's no doorknob. Oh, that's just great. Come on, does this place come with an instruction manual? You put your hand out and lean against the door, taking a moment to center yourself, and your hand slips right through. You're just gonna fall through the door. Ah! You feel a chill go through you as you fall through a transparent blue wall and onto the floor. As soon as you're in, the door reforms. It's you again! Well, aren't I the lucky girl? Shrey is our roommate! Yes! We got lucky! Oh, right, from earlier. I kind of lost you in the dining hall. Yeah, sorry about that. I had friends waiting and, well, you know how that goes. I'm so pleased I'll be- uh, eh. I'm so pleased I'll be a perfect roommate. I don't know what you've heard about me, but I assure you it's partially true. Only partially true. When she pauses for air, it, or maybe dramatic effect, you take a good look at your surroundings. I love the blue fireplace. Look at that. Fucking Viserion been around here. That's awesome. And the, the, the custom, like, Pendercast pillow. That looks so cool. I'd buy that if that was merch. They do actually have some merch. I'm, I need to look, um, see what uh, elementalist merch they have again. I was hoping my roommate would have a bit more panache, is that? Uh, in the style department, but being as trendy as me isn't easy. Well, say something. Uh, uh, I think you... Um... Are even cuter than before? What? I, I don't want to insult her in any way. Oh, I like you already. I think I'm gonna like you too. Sever fight. Get in there! If you don't mind, I've had the worst day and I could really use a second to relax. You can plop down onto the nearby couch, sinking into the soft cushion. Shreer perches on a chair across from you. You sigh. Huh, <sighs> you said before that whatever I've heard about you is only partially true. Yeah, but I've not heard anything about you. <laughs> Shreya rolls her eyes. I know you're thinking about me and Fifi's tiff at Mystery Inc.'s annual charity fashion show. Yes. I was, I was thinking of exactly that. Fifi, Mystery Inc. charity show? You know, the one with the lava lock runway? It was all over the news a month ago, not to brag. I get the feeling that if I tell you that I have no idea who you are, it's going to be a whole thing. <laughs> she is absolutely still for a moment before she finally smiles, though it's almost, it almost looks painful. It's like, it's like when, it's, it's just like going up to a celebrity and saying you have no idea who you are. <laughs> Not at all. My family is only the number one purveyor of enchanted objects worldwide, but why would you know that? Besides... This was the whole point, to come to college, have new experiences, fly under the radar. Well, I think in terms of me, I'm, I'm invisible to the radar, I just know nothing. Become the person I want to be, you know? 
Oh, I, I love this music. This I think out of all the bits of music of the Elementalist, this one's my favorite. Um, I know exactly how you feel. I literally, personally know exactly how she feels. Honestly, that's the same thing I was hoping to get out of the college experience. Do you ever feel like no matter how hard you try, nothing fits? Like the things that you think are gonna make you happy never do? Absolutely. It's how I felt all the time. Until I arrived here, that is. This morning I was at this college I used to think was finally going to be my place in the world. But it very quickly became clear that it wasn't. And then I got here and... Yeah, it's a little weird and a little hard to believe. But for the first time, something finally feels right. Now it's all going to be taken away. Taken away? I don't understand. Why would... Your voice trembles as you finally tell her the truth, revealing the secret you've been keeping in since your arrival. I can't do magic! What? You lower your voice to barely more than a whisper. I was in my dorm bathroom at Hartfeld, and there was something weird in the mirror, and when I touched it, I just... <laughs> fell into a lake, and ended up here. You throw your hands up, unable to explain, not even knowing what happened yourself. And I don't know what to do now. I'm afraid of what will happen if I tell someone, but I know I can't leave. You watch Shreya guiltily as she stares at you wide-eyed. You're... You're not gonna, like, erase my memory or melt my brain or... I'll help you. Uh, you will? <laughs> Thank you! I mean, seriously, I thought the first person I told would, I don't know, light me on fire? Do you guys do that? <laughs> Well, I certainly can, being a fire at and all, but I won't. Part of the reason I came to college was to meet all different kinds of people, and you, Sam, are quite an interesting kind of person. But have you considered that there may be magic in you? Have you tried any? Well, there was that thing with the door? No, no, the doors are enchanted to accept the tenant's genetic code, that wouldn't count. Shreya taps her fingers on the coffee table, her eyes roving the room. When they stop, she grins and hops out of the chair. I've got it. Come on, let's go before the shop closes. Wait, wait. Where, where, are, the, where are we going? I thought we couldn't leave campus. You follow Shreya across the room and find yourself facing a door with a variety of doorknobs in different shapes and sizes scrawled, uh, screwed onto it. There are a few pre-selected places we're allowed to go, like Penn Square, for example. You notice that each knob has a neatly inscribed label above it. Sam's room, Shrey's room, Penn Square... Wait, are you saying my room is in there? Sure, so is mine, and Penn Square, and the lake. That, one's, that one opens up in a tree though, it can be quite unpleasant if you run into a Burke Spire. What in the fuck is a Burke Spire? Shrey examines the labels carefully until finally she finds the knob labelled Penn Square. She turns it and pushes the door open. I want the custom animations. I love it. There we are, Penn Square. Here we are. Like Hogsmeade. Or Diagon Alley. Whoa. Charming, right? It's pretty nice. In the afternoon sun, the square is bustling with activity. You see a stately woman with deep blue skin and tusks dragging a kicking toddler with impish horns past a magical toy store. Beyond that, a pair of men with pointed elfish ears and webbed hands debate over a beaded bracelet at a store marked Charms. Is that... Somewhere I can eat? I'm starving! <laughs> you spot a nearby store selling a variety of pastries in various colours and sizes and your mouth begins to water. Treya leads you hurriedly away. You've read that wonderful non-fiction book, Alice in Wonderland, no? Well, I can't say I've ever really read it, but, uh, I'm aware of it. Come on, no t uh, oh, oh god, is that what those pastries do? <laughs> Come on, no time to waste. We need to get you something, uh, we need to get you something to help with that whole no magic thing. And how exactly are we supposed to fix that? She stops abruptly in front of a shop label labelled Mason D.U. 
The sign in the window describes it as your one-stop shop for one-stop shopping. That doesn't really describe what it is we actually get here. You know, I'm just saying. Um, let's get inside and see if they have what we're looking for. Inside, every square, in uh, square inch of the shop is packed with clothes, knickknacks, and all manner of glowing, spinning, and rattling mystical objects. Wow. How are we even supposed to find anything in here? That's where I come in. Oh, um, just a second, please. A rustling from the pile of lamps on your left makes you jump. A mountain of rusted candelabras avalanches off of a high shelf, heading straight toward you. Ah! You duck, bracing for impact, but it never comes. Sorry about that. I was organizing some of the flog arch droppings we store under this armoire. You take a hesitant peek up and see that the candelabras have been stopped in midair and are hovering just over your head. The girl in front of you flicks her vine wrapped hand and the candelabras restack themselves on the shelf. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to surprise you. You stare at her wide eyed and she gives you a knowing smile. First time meeting a wood nymph? I'm Asta. I run this shop. She holds out her hand, and when you shake it, you're shocked how her skin feels both like polished wood and flesh all at once. I'm Sam. Um, I like your shop. Thanks, it's my father's, actually. Well, my grandfather's. I guess it was his father's before that. What does ownership really mean, anyway? If I feel the most strongly about something, does it then become mine? I never knew a compliment about a shop could turn into a whole, like... Uh, philosophical debate. She pauses thoughtfully, looking off into the distance as her eyes grow dark and clouded. After a while, it seems obvious that she's checked out completely. Interesting. Asta's eyes lighten and refocus on Shreya as she shakes her head clear. Oh, it's you again. I was hoping you'd be back. I'd assume so. I spent a minor fortune the last time I was here. Listen, love, do you have any marbles? My friend here is worried about the first day of classes and wants a boost. Yeah, a anything would help you. <laughs> Please. Asta looks at you, her eyes shining brightly. So you're a Pendergast student too? You both are so lucky. She skips off toward the counter and disappears behind it. I've been begging Papa to let me go, but he's still bitter about all that one business. As the pops up from behind the counter, coughing and covered in dust. She slams a polished wooden box down on the counter with mystery miracle marbles written in gold curlic handwriting on the lid. You give Shreya a look before gingerly lifting the edges of the box, revealing four multicolored orbs within. Wow, that, they are very cool. What are they? Shreya plucks a clear orb from the box. The opaque white smoke begins to curl inside the glass. Ah. Huh. One of Mystery Inc.'s bestsellers. Each of these orbs contains enough magic to perform one spell per element. They may be small, but they pack quite a punch. Like one very beautiful, very down-to-earth heiress we all know and love. Oh really, who could that be? With a smile, she places the white orb into your palm, folding your fingers over it. And this little guy is all yours. But why would magic people need something like this? You can use it instantly instead of taking the time to build a spell, and it won't use up any of your own magic, so you can cast again immediately. They're the very best on the market. Of course, they'll only work for the elements with which they correspond. You look a little closer at the contents of the box, and see a variety of colours in the tendrils of smoke. Blue, green, red... How do you even use it? Ah, Aster, do you have any singles? Asta rummages through a drawer before handing Shreya a dusty blue orb. It'll cost you, and I must insist that you go outside to... Shre uh, Shreya rolls the marble between her thumb and forefinger, raising it up toward the ceiling, and a rain cloud appears overhead as the blue smoke dissipates from the marble. It begins to pour. See? Easy. You were tuned to never listen! The leaves in Asta's hair rustle as she glowers at Shreya. She flicks her uh, finger, and a strong blast of wind blows the clouds and the rain away, leaving you completely dry. Oh, don't be such a tenacious toad, Asta. What do you think, Sam? These will surely come in handy. These special one-time use orbs will help you stay at Pendercast. Oh yeah, like that's not going to happen anyway. And will unlock special scenes and options throughout the book. 
I'll take a whole set, as you can see, uh, there's no- there's nothing flashing off, because I've already bought that choice in the past. In the words of John Tron, I'll take your entire stock! Yeah, we'll take a whole set. All four of them. These will at least help me fly under the radar until I can figure out what to do next. You hand us to a few bills from your wallet. Oh, yeah, we don't have any money. Uh, she peers at them curiously. I hope that's enough. Absolutely not. This money is worthless. Lucky for you, I can fetch a high price for it on the collector's market. What, you selling regular non-magical money? That's... Alright. After saying goodbye to Aster, you and Treya head back through the portal to your, do to, to your dorm. What, did Treya pay for them, or did, <laughs> did we just steal them? <laughs> so, now that you've got a bit of magic to take into battle, do you think you're ready to face tomorrow? Honestly, I don't see how it'll matter after this attunement placement thing. Seriously, Shreya, what am I gonna do? She puts a tentative hand on your shoulder. You're gonna get through this because I'm going to help you. And I'm just too fabulous to fail. Yeah, that you are. You're unable to hold your laugh in and soon Shreya's laughing too. Over her shoulder, something catches your eye. In the mirror across the room, you see a smudge. Or maybe a shadow. Shreya, do you see that? Hmm? You look around, trying to find the source of the reflection as you step closer to the mirror. The shadow pulses, grows, and you tilt your head even closer. Oh, it's from my cre- it's Arthur again. From my creepy reflection. Wait, that's- It's only then that you realize the shadow is on your side of the glass! Hello? Sam? Oh, God, hello! Uh, that's my best, uh, sound effect for that. The shadowy creature turns into a violent shade of red. Uh, uh, an opening appears below its two hollow eyes, it lets out an angry hiss. It launches itself at you, sending you reeling. Ah! You trip over your own feet, falling backwards as the shadow springs. Uh, uh... Uh, dodge it! Get out of the way! You roll out of the way, throwing up hand to keep it off- uh, keep it off you. Ah! Oh, what was that? And a bright beam, golden as the sun, shoots from your palm, blasting right through the middle of the creature. And that's how it's done. I got the magic in me! You blasted the shadow monster with powerful magic. How? Even though the light has faded, your palm still glows warmly. The shadow creature has been reduced to nothing. Yeah! That's how it's done! You fucking... Ball? Don't you come back! You can feel the energy humming inside of you, and instantly you know it's been there all along. Somewhere under the surface. Somewhere secret. What the hell was that? I don't know. But it looks like there may be hope for you yet. Thank god this video went on way longer than I anticipated. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me on the first episode of The Elementalist. And this is almost a 50 minute- wait, well, it's gonna be a 50 minute video by the time I've done an outro. Oh man. But thanks a lot for watching everyone, I really hope you did enjoy. If you did, make sure to leave a like and comment down below. Um, our journey into the world of the Elementalist is only just beginning and uh, I for one can't wait to uh, go on it with you. So thanks a lot for watching everyone and I will see you on another video very very soon. Goodbye everyone.